34, please. Psalm 34. It's also good to have our brother Samuel Scott with us home from Australia. And we do trust that he'll have a blessed time as he's home visiting friends. Good to see you again, Samuel. And we do trust that the Lord will continue to bless you down under in your ministry in Australia. Psalm 100, sorry, Psalm 34, Psalm 34. In Psalm 34, the psalmist begins with these words, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. We know that the Lord will add his blessing to that reading from Psalm number 34. Psalm 34, or the opening words to Psalm 34, opens to us this morning a unique and a great ministry that I believe that every child of God, every true born-again child of God must focus on and engage in. The opening words of Psalm 34 opens before us a very great and a very unique ministry. It's a ministry, child of God, that if you master it, if you master this morning this ministry, I can assure you this morning that it will, it will bring before those around you this morning a great blessing. In fact, this morning, this ministry will make an impact on those around you. And if you this morning are engaged in this ministry, or you can master this ministry, let me assure you, it will make more of an impact, not only on those around you, but it will make an impact on you. It will make an impact, not only on those around us, it will make an impact on ourselves. I wonder this morning, are you involved in this ministry? I wonder this morning, would you allow the Lord to bring you into this ministry? Would you allow the Lord, would you allow yourself to be brought into this ministry? Because it's a ministry that brings great blessing. Not only to those around you, but most of all and above all, it's a ministry that brings such blessing to your own heart and to your own soul. That's if you can master this ministry. The ministry that Psalm 34 brings out before us in the opening words. It's a very unique ministry. Do you know what it is? It's the ministry of blessing the Lord. It's not preaching the gospel. Mind you, there's, there's blessing in preaching the gospel. But not everybody's called to preach the gospel. It's not... Teaching God's Word. Oh, there's a blessing in teaching God's Word, and there's a blessing in teaching Sunday school. There's a blessing from serving the Lord on the mission field, and there's a blessing in serving the Lord at all times. But this is not just any kind of ministry. 
It's a ministry for every truly born-again child of God, a blessing, a ministry in blessing the Lord. Here's a wee question I want to ask. It's not me that wants to ask the question at all. It's the Lord. And the Lord wants you to search your heart this morning, and He wants you to ask yourself the question, when was the last time you got alone with the Lord? You closed yourself away, and you got down before the Lord, and you spent the whole time not praying. But praising Him. Not bringing the Lord your demands and your desires. Just getting before the Lord and, and blessing Him. And blessing the Lord for all that He's done, and blessing the Lord for all who He is. Do you know that's why so many Christians, wait to tell you this, this is why there are so many Christians today and the very little blessing in their lives. They've never blessed the Lord. They've never took the time, you know, to to think or to meditate on what the Lord has done and, and for what the Lord has blessed them with. Wonder is your Christian life this morning, are you experiencing blessing in it? Or has your Christian life become stale and, and stagnant and, ah, I just go through every day? D.L. Moody on one occasion dreamed a dream. Do you ever dream dream? And some of them are ridiculous, and they seem so real. Do you ever dream a dream? I remember one night dreaming this dream that I got up. That sounds a bit Irish, but I dreamed one night that it was morning, and I woke up, and it was Sunday morning. And I turned around, now I'm only dreaming now, this is only a dream. And I turned around to see what time it was in the clock, and to my horror it was ten to two in the afternoon. And in my dream, I could see, oh, I can see it. I said, oh, my goodness, Tracy, what are we going to do now? Pandemonium in the tabernacle, I haven't turned up. What has happened? What have they done? And it seemed so real, did it? It seemed so real. And in my dream, I could see myself going down the stairs, couldn't find the mobile anywhere. And then I found it, and I looked at it, and I knew way you, you do this with a mobile phone now. You've done this here. And I've seen 24 missed calls from William Joe. <laughs> and I looked up, and I shouted up to Tracy, Tracy, oh, we've had it now. This is us finished. This is our ministry finished in Kilkeel now. How am I going to explain to the people that I slap in? And then I looked at my mobile phone again. It wasn't 24 times at all. It was 42 times. William John tried to write. And I can see it yet, and, and, and I remember it so well, shouting up the stairs, what am I going to say? Here's your ring, William John. I said, I, I couldn't. What am I going to say to him? And William John, he, Tracy said this, like, he's a very understanding man. <laughs> and I, 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 I can see myself dreaming, or I can see myself yet in the dream. Hitting the mobile number, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? This is an awful embarrassing thing. How am I going to go to church in the evening? And, think? and, and the phone started ringing, and I was hoping that he wouldn't answer it. I'd rung three or four times, and he answered it. And just when he said hello, I felt this dunt in the back and the voice saying, George, it's time to get up. I was never as glad of a half six on a Tuesday morning in my life. Do you ever dream old stupid dreams? And they're so real. Well, D.L. Moody dreamed this dream. He dreamed one day that he went into a barn where he met the devil. At the devil. And in the barn along the wall, there was all these sacks of different seeds. There was one labeled hatred. There was another sack labeled greed, another sack labeled jealousy, another sack labeled despair, another sack labeled unforgiveness, another sack labeled with pride. 
And he says to the devil, what's all these seeds for? Oh, he says, them's great seeds, the devil said. He says, what do you mean? Those are great seeds. He says, I sow them seeds in the, in the hearts of Christians. And he says, in no time they take root. He says, there's a big pile of sacks there. You have, all lab- you have no labels on those. Oh, he says, them's my favorite. Them's the easiest seeds that I can get to sprout in the hearts of Christians. And Moody said, and what would those seeds be? He says, those are seeds of discord. He says, them's the easiest seeds I can get to grow and to sprout in the hearts of Christians. Discord. You know what the old devil told Moody in his dream? He says, they see Christians, they're the easiest people that I can get to talk about one another. Discord. Jealousy, greed, doubt, fear. Moody said in my dream I was horrified. And I challenged the old devil. I says, devil, devil, tell me, are there any hearts that those seeds don't work in? Are there any kind of heart in Christians that those seeds won't sprout in? Ah, oh, he says, there is. But many, there's very few of them about. He says, what, what, what kind of heart, what kind of heart does those seeds find impossible to grow in? Those hearts, said the old devil, those hearts that bless God, those hearts that are enjoying the Lord, those hearts this morning, he said, that are joyful and thankful. I wonder this morning, child of God, as we're looking, what seeds has the devil sown there? Or has the devil tried and failed because you're joyful in the Lord? The devil has tried and failed perhaps because you spend your day blessing the Lord. Or does he find it impossible because you're the Christian that's always thankful for what the Lord has done? You see, child of God, here's the title of my message. There is blessing. in blessing the Lord. There's a blessing you'll receive in blessing the Lord. Do you know anything about that kind of blessing this morning? Are you one that blesses the Lord? Look at my text this morning, Psalm 34, verse 1. This is what the psalmist said. He says in Psalm 34 and verse 1, he says, I will bless the Lord when? At all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And child of God, when I look into the heart of the psalmist, do you know what I see? First of all, I see determination in his heart to bless the Lord. Listen to what he says. He says, I will bless the Lord. He's determined. And as I look into his heart, friends, he's going to allow nothing to stop him, and he's going to allow nothing to prevent him from praising the Lord. You know, there's so many believers today, and listen, I could be as guilty as anybody else. Don't you look up into this pulpit and think George McConnell's a super spiritual person. I'm not a super spiritual person at all. I'm just an ordinary five eight like everybody else. Sometimes you know what I find? I find there's times the old devil, he'll say things to you. And he'll cause you to think things, leaving you that the last thing you want to do is bless the Lord. Do you know that's the last thing that the devil wants you and I to do this morning? The last thing the devil wants you and I to do is to bless the Lord. Do you know when Psalm 34 was written? Psalm 34 was written just immediately after one of the most dangerous, dark experiences in David's life. 
You'll read about it in 1 Samuel chapter 21, where David is on the run from Saul. Saul's hunting him down, trying to kill him like a dog. And he runs to the Philistines for help. And when he's in the Philistines for help, there he begins to feel danger. And he starts acting the madman. He starts acting crazy. It's a sad day when people who believe in God have to run to the world for help. And if you run to the world for help, I'll tell you something now, friend. You'll be anything but spiritual. But there came a time when David was there, he called unto the Lord, and the Lord delivered him. And it says in Psalm 34, a friend, this whole psalm was written as that experience, as the Lord delivered him from it. And out of this psalm, David shares from his heart the blessing that there is in blessing the Lord, and he exhorts others to do it. John Bradford stood before Queen Mary and said to Queen Mary, If you release me, I will bless the Lord, and I will thank you. And John Bradford went on to say, And if you imprison me, I will bless the Lord, and I will thank thee. And he looked into her face and he said, And if you burn me, I will still bless the Lord, and I'll still thank thee. For my life is not my own, for my life is God's. And God can do with whatever He wants of my life. I'll still bless Him. Bradford, as he was being burned at the stake, historians tell us that he died blessing the Lord. And praising him for all that the Lord was to him. You remember Job, don't you? Job lost family, Job lost flocks, Job lost farm. In Job 1, 21, how did he take it? I'll tell you, he was determined to bless the Lord because he says, The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, I think we would all need to learn to bless the Lord this morning. You see, David and John Bradford and men like him, and ladies like him, and Job, they were determined to bless the Lord no matter what. Tell me this, child of God, as I look at all of this this morning, you know what David's determination was? He was determined to honor, and he was determined to glorify the Lord. Tell me this, child of God. The Lord asked me a wee question on Tuesday morning, and He wants to ask you the question this morning. What's in your heart that's preventing you from reaching this spiritual wavelength that the Lord desires you to be on? David said, I will, you know. Listen, child of God, here's a wee thought. Don't determine, or don't be determined by someone else's stance in the Lord. Don't you allow anybody else's stance in the Lord to determine you to reach this level. But you be determined 
by your own individual stunts to bless the Lord. David said, I will. He wasn't looking to see if anybody else was going to bless the Lord. First order to see what everybody else was doing. David was determined himself. I will. We need to develop, child of God, and I need to develop because, listen, a soul that cannot bless the Lord is a miserable soul. A heart that cannot bless the Lord is a miserable heart. A Christian who cannot bless the Lord is a most miserable Christian. And we need to develop a heart that's determined to bless the Lord. But I look at that text, I don't only see a determination. I see a, I, I see a concentration in the heart to bless. He says, I will bless the Lord. You know, friend, David's not focused in all that's going around him. David's not focused on what's troubling him. David's not focused on what's annoying him. David's not focused now on what's worrying him. David's focused on the Lord. I will bless the Lord. And David's allowing nothing to cloud out his concentration as he's before the Lord. Dear believer, are you taken up with the Lord this morning? Are we taken up with the Lord, taken up with Him? Do you remember what Paul said in Ephesians 1, verse 3? Paul said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Oh, I think, you know, we have every reason to bless the Lord because of how the Lord has blessed us. Do you ever take a moment and think of the spiritual blessings? There's the spiritual blessing of forgiveness. I'm telling you, when you think of how your sins have been forgiven and how your sins this morning are under the blood and how your sins this morning will be remembered no more, I think that gives me every reason to bless the Lord, not to moan and groan and mope about. Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Every sin is covered gives me every reason to bless the Lord. What about salvation? I think we could take a wee moment just to stop and pause and ponder as to think of what the Lord did for us in salvation. How it wasn't by works of righteousness, that's what we have done, but according to His grace, He hath saved us according to His mercy. How could we not bless the Lord? And maybe that's the medicine we all need to take this morning to get us out of this spiritual apathy, to get us out of this, to get us out of this old spiritual deadness. We need to learn the ministry and the art of blessing the Lord. You think you were saved from going to hell? I think God gives you a good reason to bless the Lord. You think this morning not only the spiritual blessing of of forgiveness and salvation. You think of the great spiritual blessing of an inheritance awaiting us in heaven. There's a whole pile of boys waiting for inheritances down here. And when they go to the solicitor, they realize that no inheritance like a wee man that lived outside on or Clay where we were. He hadn't a checker child. He was in South their own hospital and they were waiting on all he had was two nephews. Ernie had called the wee man, and the two nephews were sent for. And Ernie was in South Throne Hospital and breathing very br heavily, and waiting for Ernie to take the final breath and then go. Ernie kept breathing, and he opened the eyes, and he saw the two nephews on one side of the bed, and the two nephews never bothered with him, never looked about him or nothing. And Ernie seen the two boys, and he says, By jingles, the vultures are circling early. And Ernie didn't, he? Ernie got back there, and the two nephews away off, they scabbered again. 
But in six months, he took another turn, and this time he went into the hospital, and there was no coming out of it. And the two boys, they were at the funeral, and they were dressed in the 90s, handing out orders, service, and coming up with a sad face and all. You know the way, it's all old pretense, have it. But underneath, there was a smile for the, the solicitors to go to see after the service. The two boys, they went off to the solicitors, and they sat down rubbing their hands, and they realized they didn't get one blade of grass. Not one blade at all went to the neighbor. But child of God, I can say like Peter, Peter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, that one that feareth not away, reserved in heaven for you. How I can bless the Lord. I have a heavenly home to go to. And I have a mansion, and it's not a room, just in case you believe it's a room. I'm not going to no room, sitting room, bedroom, dining room. I'm going to a mansion. Jesus says he's preparing for me a mansion. And I'm telling you, friend, the moment I close my eyes in death, it'll be into that mansion I will go, and there I will be with my Savior. Friend, what a hope I have. What a reason to bless the Lord. What a reason. Friend, when we think of what he's done and what he's promised and who he is, he's the creator and the sustainer of all things. Ah, oh, friend, Psalm 97, verse 1, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of the isles be glad thereof. Don't you be worrying about Donald Trump or whoever the on boy is in North Korea or anybody else. The Lord reigneth. Do you know what the Bible teaches me? The Bible teaches me that when you see these things, these things that we are looking at today, the Bible doesn't teach you to panic. The Word of God says, look up. Why? Why look up for? Because your redemption draweth nigh. I say, child of God, between you and me and these four walls, haven't we something to bless the Lord about? I will bless the Lord. The determination, the concentration. Look at the continuation. At all times. Oh, David wasn't just going to bless the Lord when the sun was shining. Not at all. Remember Paul and Silas that blessed the Lord when they were in pain. You remember when they were put, their feet were put in the stocks and their backs were lashed red raw. They weren't moaning about their rights. They prayed and they sang praises and they blessed the Lord in pain. They didn't just sing and bless the Lord in the midst of a revival, no, in pain. What about persecution? Matthew 5 and 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. What the Lord say to do? To cry and moan about it. No, he says rejoice and be exceedingly glad for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Listen to Habakkuk. You're not only to bless the Lord in pain, bless the Lord in persecution. Listen to this. You're to bless the Lord in poverty. In poverty. Habakkuk 3 and 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the veins. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields that shall yield no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. What a ministry to be engaged in. A ministry in blessing the Lord. You mightn't be gifted to preach the gospel, but you can still bless the Lord. Well, you can bless the Lord, friend, and we have every reason to know. And you know, friend, for us to bless the Lord, it's what He desires, it's what He demands. Ah, oh, friend, and you see, when we learn to bless the Lord for who He is and for what He's done, 
you'll find a blessing that you never found before. And you'll receive a blessing you never received before. I'll tell you there's a blessing in blessing the Lord. Ah, but finally, look at the exaltation within his heart. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Listen to this. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 107, verse 31. Oh, that man would praise the Lord. He seeks to exalt him. Look at the magnification in his heart. Verse number three, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. If we would only learn to magnify the Lord instead of magnifying our problems. You magnify your problems, God becomes small to your faith. But when you magnify God, your problems become as nothing. Oh, friend, May we have this determination. I will through thicker than I will bless. And we have this concentration. I will bless the Lord and continuation at all times. And we'll have this, ex- we'll have this exaltation. And this praise shall be continually in my mouth. And I'll tell you, there will be the magnification. Oh, that we would magnify the Lord. What a blessing it would be to those around us. And what a blessing it would be to us personally if we could only learn the art and master the ministry of blessing the Lord. It'll take determination. It'll take endurance. It'll take grace. Let us see to it that we bless the Lord at all times. May God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Our